Welcome to Monetize Your Message, where we're helping you develop strategies to build a consistent message and achieve all of your business goals. I'm Jesse. And I'm Marie. And welcome to the third episode, where we are going to be talking about what is a business pillar and how can it make you money. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> to dig into this, it's important to define a pillar before we can talk about the goods. So um a pillar is a word that we like to use in our business to describe an overarching topic that's present within your content it's something that when you say to yourself okay what do i want to be known for that comes to mind um it's something that you talk around a lot that a lot of your content is centered around and more importantly perhaps that your offers are centered around And much like a pillar in architecture holds up the foundation of a building, it holds up everything else within the structure, your pillars are really essential to your business. Without them, nothing really necessarily makes sense within your business and everything can feel very scattered and incohesive. So these pillars are really important for building upon the base of your business. Exactly. We all know very well-meaning, very um, hard-working entrepreneurs who can't quite seem to settle on an idea. Um, And it's hard because when you think, okay, this person's doing this, and then the next thing you know, they've turned around and they're doing something else. Um, It's just because they don't have their pillars in place. Chances are they already have figured out a lot of their skill sets, and they're really just trying to maximize those. But turns out one of the virtues of being a successful entrepreneur is consistency. Mm -hmm. And your pillars really help you with that because just like in a building, like Jesse said, your pillars of your business are structurally vital for your business. And if you start swapping them them out, all of a sudden your ceiling's going to collapse on you, right? So um, that's why it's important. Um, We want to make a distinction, though, between a pillar, which I guess you could say is a topic, and a subtopic. A subtopic gets a lot more nitty gritty. So um, we want to go into a couple of examples just to give you some grounding for this. So we'll start with our own business. So um, our pillars are pretty easy to tell. Our business is North Star Messaging and Strategy. We have two pillars, messaging and strategy. And um, one under the pillar of messaging, we're going to dig into just a couple of um, subtopics. So one of those would be your voice. Um, Jesse and I put a lot of emphasis on writing and creating content, um, even verbal content like videos like this, podcast interviews, anything that uses your authentic voice. And part of the reason for this is that there may, you may be in a business, I mean, there are tons of other people, right, who do copywriting like we do, but how do we set ourselves apart? Well, part of it is just because no other business out there has a Jesse and a Marie. Um, the same with your business. Your business, right? <laughs> Happy dance. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so your business also is the only business that has you. Mm-hmm. And... You are one of your own assets. And so when you speak in your own voice and when you speak in a way that's natural to you, you reveal your personality, you make yourself approachable, you make yourself likable in a way that just a business on its own, just like an entity, just cannot. So that's one of our subtopics is your voice. Another one of our subtopics under the pillar of messaging is positioning yourself as an expert within your field. So when you have a very strong message and it's a message that's really centered around your core and your beliefs, it becomes very easy for you to very naturally assume the role of an expert in that topic because this is something you didn't choose your business idly right you chose your business based on something you care about something you're good at something that you want to spend your time doing that you enjoy helping people with and so that makes you an expert in it especially the more time and more background you have in it and so when you can speak to your expertise and when you can just speak confidently in general that expertise really becomes apparent for people and it is something that truly strengthens your business. So um, now Jesse's gonna give us a couple other examples outside of our own industry, just so that you can get a variety of feelings for what a pillar is versus a subtopic. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that, you know, 
if you think about the pillar as kind of the umbrella topic, so you're going to have fewer pillars than you are going to have subtopics. You may only have two to five pillars. Like we only have two pillars. Three is a really good number, two to three pillars, because they are very broad and general. Those subtopics get super specific. And because you have specific subtopics, you're able to use them to inform what content you create, whether it's a blog post or a video like this, or even an offer that you have. So an example outside of our business would be, let's say you run a health and a nutrition business, and you talk about all different sorts of things within health and nutrition. One of your pillars might be treating your body well, and you may have a different pillar that's treating your mind well. So those are some umbrella topics that you could have, and you may only have those two pillar topics within your business, but then beneath them, you can have more specific ideas. So for example, under treat your body well, you might have one subtopic that talks specifically about exercise routines, or you may even want to get more specific and talk about 30 minute exercise routines. Let's say your audience is people who don't have a lot of time. So that would be a really great subtopic for those people. And then another subtopic might be easy meat-free meals if your audience cares about, you know, removing meat from their diets and something like that. So the, that's another consideration as you're thinking through your subtopics. Your pillars are very broad and they're also very tied into your stance, your beliefs, your mission, and your, your vision. But when you start looking at your subtopics, you're also considering, okay, what is important to my audience? What do they need to hear about these pillars? What topics are the most important to them, what subtopics are the most important to them. And so that kind of helps, can help you figure out which ones make the most sense for you and for your business. Exactly. So now that you have some grounding in how we define pillars and subtopics, it's important to talk about why they're important. <laughs> why do we actually recommend this? Why do we spend so much time talking about this? Um, so let's dig into that. Your content, after you have defined your pillars, becomes so much easier to write because if you think about it if you actually take time to write down your pillars and write down the subtopics underneath them you now have a list of topics to write about there's going to be no more of this scrambling last minute oh gosh i gotta write a facebook post today or oh no i gotta send an email list what earth am i going to talk about all of a sudden you have a list of topics that are totally on message for you and um, you never have to worry about being scattered. You don't have to worry about being that serial entrepreneur who just can't be pegged down. You have your list, you have your directions. It's like a map and you can just adhere to the map and go forward. Another thing that is um, really important about this as one of the benefits of establishing your pillars and this is getting back into the monetization is it's a lot easier for people to want to buy from you when they have a clue what it is you do, what it is you stand for, who you are. Um, they come to know you as an expert in that topic. They understand the logical progression of your content. And um, when you're very strategic about um, matching up or marrying up your offers with your pillars and your sub subtopics, it's very easy for someone to understand, okay, this person's been talking about nutrition. They've been talking about eating well. They've been talking about fast, easy, meat-free meals. Hey, I'm vegetarian. I could really use that. I'm super busy. I'm a busy mom. Oh my gosh, she's selling a, a meal plan for a week of 30-minute, easy, meat-free meals. Purchase, <laughs> right? There's like a progression. And, and as you become known for something and as people come to like and understand you, it becomes so much more easy for someone to feel comfortable buying from you. They understand the value of what you have to offer. They understand what you stand for and they want in on that. Yeah. And the other thing that we haven't really talked much about, but is also true is it also helps with things outside of your business as far as what you as an entrepreneur are doing. So things like shiny object syndrome become less of a problem if you have this roadmap in front of you. And we all know how easy it is to look at something and say, ooh, that's a nice course. Oh, that sounds important. You know, I just started my Facebook and started getting traction, but Instagram might be fun or Pinterest or LinkedIn or Twitter or all of them. Why not? <laughs> so, and, and very quickly, you end up with this list of ways that you want to get your message out there that is being diluted because you're doing it in too many ways. You're trying to learn too many things. You're trying to implement too many things. But if your business itself is really honed in on your pillars and your subtopics, then you can also see where the gaps are that you might need to fill. You can say, okay, this is an area that needs some more work. This is where I'm gonna focus my energy and that will also inform where you 
spend time learning things or investing in things within your business and where you spend time developing new content and whatnot. Because you may realize, for example, with our subtopics of voice and positioning yourself as an expert, we may look at that and realize, oh, well, we have like 8 billion things about voice, but only two things about positioning yourself as an expert. So now we know that that's where we want to focus our content creation moving forward. So it's not just a matter of what you have, it's a matter of what you don't have too, if it's important to your business. So, which leads to how do you do it? How do you get these pillars and these subtopics in place so that you can start making these really informed decisions about your business and how to create that progression so that people are actually buying your products and your services and your offers without hesitation. You know, they are so excited to get on board because they've followed this progression. So it's really simple to get started. All you really need to do is start thinking about what you're already talking about and write it down. You know, journal about the different topics that come up, things that you may have talked about in blog posts and Facebook posts, pretty much anywhere, even things that you talk about just in, you know, private message or in a phone conversation with a potential client. What comes up? What do you talk about? What things keep getting repeated? And if you're newer and you haven't started really talking about things a lot, think about what kind of topics would you like, do you think you would like to talk about? What kind of things really excite you? And are you, what parts of your message are you really excited to get out there? And that gives you a bit of a starting point. Totally. One thing to keep in mind is that um, everything that you're excited about and passionate about unfortunately is not going to make the cut. <laughs> I happen to be really passionate about Harry Potter. <laughs> not going to lie. But that does not show up in our messaging very often. And that's totally fine. Do we occasionally throw in an inspirational quote by J.K. Rowling? Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's really important to make sure that when you, when you start writing down all these things, you think about what are the broad categories everything can fit under. And when you start sensing that it gets too scattered just from what you're writing down, um, it's okay to strike things. It doesn't mean you can't still be passionate about them and can't still love them. That may just be something that you do on the side or just something that you explore with your friends and family or just something that you engage in on your own private time. Um, that's totally fine. <laughs> um, there's, there's totally a danger though in, in making your business so much a reflection of you that you don't hone in enough for people to understand in very clear, like one or two sentence terms, what it is you stand for. So there's a balance to keep there. Definitely be inspired by and be guided by your passions, your vision, your values, but they can't all have a seat at the table, unfortunately. So. Right. Um, but as far as a brainstorming activity, just kind of getting all of those things out on paper is a great way to start. Cause then you can see what do I strike? What are things that you know, maybe mentioned occasionally, but aren't a part of the core progression that I'm creating in my business. So Marie's example with Harry Potter was a great one. Another example that we've used before is music. Both of us are music players. She plays the cello. I play the violin. Um, she plays the cello much better than I play the violin. <laughs> but, but we both have music in our background and we both have a appreciation and a passion for music. Um, especially orchestral music, but that isn't a part of our business. Uh, Marie actually gave the example we were talking the other day of how we're not North Star messaging and strategy and cello lessons. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it doesn't fit in with our message, but occasionally we might make a Facebook post or an email or something that talks about how there are principles learned within learning an instrument or being part of a full orchestra where everyone has an individual part to play, but it creates a full piece that are you know, they resemble what you do with messaging. And so in that way, we can tie it into our pillars and our subtopics, but it's not one of the main players at the table, like Marie said. Totally. Yes. Um, so I think Jesse just done something really important there, which is that the way that your subtopics and your pillars actually exist in your business, as far as the public is concerned or your audience is concerned, is through your content. And there are three broad types of content. Um, and those are promotional, where you're selling something, even if it's a free thing, like an opt-in, um, value, where you're teaching somebody about something, or you're presenting something in a new light, giving um, maybe a sort of disruptive view of a very closely held belief of a lot of people, where you can kind of help them see things in a new light. And then there is personal. And whenever you're striking things from that list that feel like they're a little bit off to the sides, 
don't erase them completely. Those could be topics for personal content. So like Jesse said, you know, we can write a post about, um, about how much we love the experience of playing a string instrument in a string ensemble because we can relate that to the experience of working with other entrepreneurs in harmony and um, having a community of people who share an interest and have similar values and then use that as a way to talk about how much we appreciate the members of our mastermind, something like that. So it's totally not off bounds and off limits if you feel like it doesn't really fit your pillars. Just consider that maybe as a way to bring it in through some personal content creation. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go back to that list that you made that has all of the things and you've gone through and struck out some stuff that might not make the cut as far as a pillar or a subtopic, but can still inform some of the content down the road. So once you have that list, the next step is just to categorize it. Figure out if there are things that you're talking about that are similar enough that you could put them under the same umbrella. And this is where you create your pillars. You see if you can get it down to somewhere between two and five categories. The fewer, the better, honestly, because that is going to help you with your bandwidth. It's much easier to keep track of two pillars than it is to keep track of five pillars. When we started our business, we were talking about a bunch of different things. And the more we've narrowed down and honed in on it, the more consistent our messaging has gotten and the easier it is for us to put out content. And that's why we only have two and pillars now. And make money. And that, yes. <laughs> and and the reason for that is because people are not confused. They aren't wondering why we're talking about one thing one week and another thing the other week that don't seem connected. And narrowing it down to just two pillars, we've really been able to hone in on, okay, this is the content we need to put out. These are the points of the content. This is how it filters into an offer or a piece of value that then filters into an offer or something that actually is you know, it makes total sense from beginning to end, and it's something that they want and need. And our audience is giving us this constant feedback so we can adjust course as we go. Totally. Which brings us to the last how on earth do you do this thing point that we wanted to make, which is don't be afraid to test it out. Get down your ideas. Everything that you do to hone in on your message will only help you. And what we would love to ask you to do if you're getting to, if you're actually going through this exercise is go to your to-do list or your calendar and go ahead and write four months from today or six months from today. Or if you're just getting started with this, even like one or two months from today, revisit my pillars. And when you've actually kind of gone through the steps and talked through it and created some content, you'll start to get a feeling very quickly for what is, um, what's helping your business and what is sort of ancillary. And um, I would also say don't give up on something if you're really, really adamant about it and you really wanna sell around it, um, but it hasn't gained traction immediately. Sometimes it just takes 60 to 90 days for people to start seeing it enough for it to actually resonate with them and for it to actually stick in their heads. And that's totally fine too. So give it some time, but do not be afraid to tweak your course a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we just finished a challenge called the connect to your core challenge and the whole um, idea behind it or the theme behind it was all about glaciers um, because I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of a glacier but they're like this crazy brilliant blue and um, we were like find you know find that pure essence within yourself and use that to create your business and part of the activity was creating your pillars and um, I had a place I was going with this <laughs> oh, right. But the idea is, if you've ever heard that term, like moving at a glacial pace, well, what that means is super slow, right? And that's, same, that's the same way for your pillars. They can change and morph a little bit over time. Your subtopics probably even more so because you may start eliminating ones as you start eliminating offers or you may start adding them as you create new opportunities within your business. But the pace should be pretty slow because you don't want to be that serial entrepreneur who nobody understands what they're doing. You can totally change. Do not be afraid to start and just start honing in and getting there and you can totally change it. You can totally, totally change it. There, there are reasons even humongous multi-million dollar brands go through rebrands. Mm -hmm. It's because they are going through this process. They may look at it in a completely different way and they may have a different process for looking at it. They may not call it pillars, but 
it is okay to change. Just don't do it so fast that people get whiplash. Exactly. And we're going to go into a deep dive of how to embrace flexibility within your business in a way that doesn't give your audience whiplash because it is important to not just keep your audience from getting confused and overwhelmed, but to keep yourself feeling invigorated by your business and by those pillars and subtopics and by the mission that you've created around your business so that you can see the changes that you want to see within your industry, within your life, within your clients' lives, and all of that good stuff that really comes from having a solid message that you can rely on and that you can build a solid business based off of. So we're going to go into that in more detail in a future episode. You have plenty to think about here with this. If you take the time to go through the activity and hone in on your pillars and subtopics, please let us know what you come up with. And we would love to kind of hear how you're honing in on your own message. Thanks so much for joining. Bye.